welcome. Thank you for choosing to listen to this spirit-filled word by David Entry. When you catch a word, you have caught God. May you catch a word today that will cause God to change your story. Be blessed. The scriptures make it very clear that God can't, you can't walk with God without faith. This morning I'm teaching on living the life of faith. The Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 4 says, The just shall live by his faith. Romans chapter 1 verse 17, The just shall live by faith. Galatians chapter 3 verse 10, The just shall live by faith. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 38, The just shall live by faith. How is the just supposed to live? How is the just supposed to live? So without faith, the just is dying. Without faith, it's like you are without spiritual breath. Without faith, you are suffocating spiritually. Without faith, you are dying spiritually. Dying here doesn't mean you don't have the life of God. But the manifestations of the life of God is being stifled, blocked, and kept out of your life. Because it takes faith to experience God. It takes faith to enjoy God. There are a lot of people who are not people of faith, even though they are called people of faith. They are religious. Being religious is different from what, different from Walking by faith. So you can be religious and yet not walking by faith. You can get up from your house and walk to church, travel to church, and still not living by faith or not doing it out of faith. In fact, the Bible says that anything that is done without faith is sin. Anything that is done without faith is sin. So, it means that God, Romans chapter 14, verse 23, so anything that is done without faith is is actually affecting what God can do for you. If it is done without faith, it is done without God. So you can be religious, but not a a man or a woman of faith. When we talk about walking by faith, living by faith, because the Bible says that the just shall live by faith. What does it actually mean to live by faith? How do I live by faith? Because the Bible says that I am crucified with Christ. Galatians chapter 2 verse 20. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I but Christ. And the life which I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So I live by the faith of the Son of God. Galatians 2.20. So that means that this Christian life is a life of faith. It starts by faith because it says that for by grace are ye saved through faith. For by grace are you saved through faith. So that's Romans, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8. Through faith, how are we saved? By grace, that means it's through faith. So your faith is what entitles you to salvation. But after salvation, to enjoy the saving power and the life of God, you have to live by faith. You have to... Your life must be an ex. Oh, this is what I'm. Your life must be constantly expressing faith. I'm not talking about wish or hope. No, I wish. I wish. Or please, don't let's not confuse it with positive thinking. We have to actually define what faith is, so we don't confuse it with, you know, a, a positive outlook in life. There are people who are not Christians, people who are not Christians, and 
they have determined that they won't be sick. And they are not sick. People who are not Christians, and in fact, there is a, a professional I was dealing with some time ago. When you ask him, how are you? I've never, I've been dealing with that person for about two years. Sometimes I you know it's a professional or something. How are you? He never, he never says, uh, fine. He says, super. Even when he's lost, when he has lost clients and he has lost um, staff, staff have, re- staff have resigned and leaving and things are down. There's never once, there's never once I have spoken to him either on phone or and said, how are you? And he says that, oh, well, try. No. Every time he says, super. <laughs> super. He's so much deep into reflexology and all those things. Super. <laughs> and when something negative happens, he tells you, eh, 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 you know, you know, that's life. You have to see the positive aspect of life. And it, 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 every negative thing that happens, he said, this is good for me. I, there's something positive inside for me. New age. But, so that doesn't mean he's walking by faith. It's just a positive outlook in life. And there are laws, and he, those of the, the, they will tell you, is the energy in life. When you have a positive outlook, the energies, the en- police post, you, you just, gen- he uses that term too. You generate positive. Sometimes I'm talking to you, he said, I can see positive energy around you, Pastor. <laughs> I tell him he's the Holy Spirit. <laughs> and then he always asks me, How are you? And he goes, How are you? I said, I am blessed. I'm blessed. They ask you how are you? Tell them you are blessed. Tell them, you are living by faith. Yes. How are you? I'm li- I live by faith. You, are ch- you have to talk it. Yes. Speak it. Yes. You are too silent and too quiet. You are too timid. S- Sometimes even if you are afraid, speak. Mm. Speak. Don't you, haven't you seen boxing before the match? <laughs> the way they talk? Yeah, yeah. Haven't you seen wrestling before the game? The way they, they talk? You think that guy is dead. <laughs> Some of them, they're afraid of. They're afraid of yeah, this guy, I'll kill him. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> but it says that <laughs> we walk by faith and not by sight. So then, if you are going to live your life as a Christian, excuse me, I'm talking about Christian. I'm not talking about religious person. Many people, like some of us, we know a lot of religious people around us. Some of us say we are born into Christian families, but it's just a religious family. Yeah. <laughs> Ali is better than none. But uh, you know what I'm talking about. Religious. My mom was very religious. My dad was very religious. Yeah. My auntie was very, my uncle. And so your, your version of Christianity is just religious tick, tick boxes. And built around, I don't do this, I don't do that. We are not supposed to do this, we are not supposed to do it. This is different from a life of faith. By faith, Rahab did not perish. Wow. <laughs> That's a very interesting. Rahab the prostitute. But, but he did, she did not perish with the rest of the people. Come on. By faith. A practicing prostitute didn't perish. <laughs> <laughs> And she didn't perish by faith. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 31. By faith, the harlot, the Bible was so clear. He put the, the title there, the, the job, the qualification, the harlot. By faith, the harlot perish not. Perish with them that believe not. Ah. So, it, see, there are people who didn't believe, but they didn't do anything wrong. And she was doing a lot of things wrong, but she chose to have faith in something. Put her confidence in something, and those who didn't believe perished. And she was, la, 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 la. (laughs) You can be doing everything right and still struggling. If you, in other words, struggling without the experience in the hand of God, unless you choose to exercise faith, Walk by faith. That's why I said the just shall live by faith. They just, do you know why you are not married? It's not because they are not, your makeup is not nice. He said the just shall marry by faith. Why don't I have a child? 
Who told you you don't have a child? You have a child by faith. You are not dying by faith. People are dying all around me. You, are you the people? Are you the people? <laughs> you are not dying. Why? By faith. I don't know why people are dying, but I know why I'm not dying. It's just simple. Why are we not dying? But I can live by faith. It shall be well with you. Amen. So, he said, we live by faith. Jesus put it this way in Mark chapter 11, verse 22. He said, have faith in God. What, 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 what? Why are you so frightful? Why are you so frightful? Satan is actually cashing in on your fear. Yeah. He says, he said, he's, Satan is sitting somewhere. <laughs> I hear that's how Satan laughs. He's just laughing. Because you're so afraid. Satan is mocking. And you are shaking like a leaf in the wind. Because of fear. Jesus said, why are you so fearful? Matthew chapter um, 8 verse 26. Why are, you feel, why are you so fearful? Where's your faith? Matthew 8, 26. Yeah. Why are you so fearful? Bible says that fear, <laughs> First John chapter uh, 4. It said fear has torment. Fear has torment. Listen, <laughs> you don't have a choice. You don't have a, you either be a man or a woman of faith or you sink. Life is going to get harsher and tougher. Yes, in the latter days, perilous times shall come, like Paul said to Timothy. Difficult times shall come. It's difficult. Jesus puts it this way. He says that because iniquity shall abound. The love of many will grow cold. Iniquity is abounding. Difficult times are coming. And it's going to be the coronavirus challenges. And it's just the beginning of many more challenges that are ahead. No, life, life cannot be without challenges. And the, the closer we get to the end times, the more the challenges will increase. So Jesus puts it this way. I've not seen such a faith. No, he says that I tell you, God will avenge his own speedily. Then he said, Luke chapter 18, verse 8, he said, but if the son of man comes, shall he find faith on this earth? By the time Jesus is coming, a lot of people, it's that only, only a few of us will have faith. Yeah. Yeah. Nevertheless, when the son of man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth? Because things are going to be tough and tougher. Listen, the only reason why, the only way you can walk on the storm is when you are a, a man and a woman of faith. I'm not talking about a man and a woman of wishes, assumptions. No, I'm talking about faith. Someone says faith. faith. Jesus said have faith in God. That's a big statement. Big statement. Have faith in God. Four ways. Have faith in God. Simple as that. But it's very heavy. Yeah. Have faith in God. Have faith in God. Have faith in God because we live by faith. The just shall live by faith. So I think it would just be appropriate to, for us to get into this whole subject so people don't confuse what faith is for something. Yeah. Because you are just very positive about life so you think it's faith. <laughs> No, no, no. I, let's get, let's settle this thing. If we are going to live by faith, a life lived by faith, what, does, what is faith and how do you then live it? What is faith? He said, we walk by faith and 2 Corinthians chapter 7 verse 5, we walk by faith and not by sight. We walk by faith. We are, we, we are living our lives by faith and not by sight. I see your faith growing. Yeah. Last Friday I was teaching on how to develop a strong faith and how to build your faith. There is a way to build your faith so you can walk by faith. What is faith? Number one, what is faith? I have seven points here. Number one, faith is restful confidence in God. Restful confidence in God. So in Matthew chapter 8, verse 24, the Bible says that when they were on the boat, there arose a storm, and Jesus was sleeping. Jesus uh, I raised the grace so, in, in so much that the ship was covered with waves. But uh, you are in a ship, and the ship is covered with waves. And he was still asleep. 
you must learn how to go to bed. Go to bed. Go to bed. Jesus said, which of you, by worrying, can add one cubit to your life? Worrying is like rocking chair. Gives you activity, but not taking you anywhere. Sometimes just go to bed. You can't do anything about it. Go to bed. When it gets tough, finish your day, shut the computer. You must learn how to say, God is in charge. You've done all you can. You can't kill, you can't steal. You've done everything. Do it right. Now leave the rest for God. You have beaten this, your child. Oh, like beating, beating, no, like beating academics into him so much. And you put, you put five tons of academic, academics into him, and you only get about three, three, three ounces of yeah, what, what is going on? And the exam is coming. Michael, seven times eight. He said 78. <laughs> hey. It's like your world is collapsing. Hey! Chill out. Chill out. Stop it. Don't force your daughter to marry somebody. Don't force your son to marry somebody. They're already in love. Stop it. Stop fretting yourself. If the doctor said this is the situation, go and face it. Go face it, but don't face it without faith. Uh, face it with rest, restful confidence in God. I know, Job said, I know my Redeemer liveth. That's, that's, that's I'm talking of faith. So the reason why you are doing what you are doing, because the reason why you are resting is because you know your Redeemer lives. And Hebrews chapter 4 verse 3, it says that we who believe have entered into rest. For we which have believed do enter. How come you say you believe? And you are so restless. You are so restless. A believer? Oh, come on. That's faithlessness. When you have faith, you enter into this restful confidence. Not in yourself. Not in the circumstance that will change. But in God. Job, in spite of all that was going on, he could rest and say, I know my Redeemer lives. Restful confidence. Sister, about your marriage, enter into restful confidence in God. Your timetable is not their timetable. Yes, your timetable is not the timetable of everybody. Stop comparing yourself to others and rest in God. That's how to live by faith. Faith is restful confidence in God. Someone say, I believe God. I believe God. So put all your eggs in one basket. That's God's basket. Put all your eggs in God's basket and rest assured that God is faithful. Listen. Uh, you see, people are depending a lot on spiritual leaders. But when it comes to faith, can you, can you breathe with someone's nose? <laughs> you, are, you are eating with somebody's mouth. It doesn't work like that. Number two, faith is, I, I actually chose to write which is live, live obedience. Live. You know when you are watching football, live. Yeah. Some people are watching this service live. It's not like a replay. It's live. As God is saying it, you are obeying it. Live obedience. Yesterday's obedience is not enough for today's testimonies. God told Abraham, give me your only son, Isaac. Genesis chapter 22. Give me your only, it came to pass that after all these things that God did test Abraham and the Lord said, give me thy only son, Isaac, whom thou loveth. Verse 2. Get thee into the land of Moriah and offer to him as a bent offering. Verse 3. 
And look at verse 3, very interesting. Verse 3 says that, and Abraham rose up early. Uh, the early is important, you know. Yeah. Early is a manifest, manifestation of an attitude. Yeah. Some of us obey, but it's delayed obedience. It's not prompt. It's delayed obedience. God asks you something. Uh, he asks you whilst you are asleep, and you, you saw, you had a vision. God was talking to you. Uh, let's, let me just use vision, okay? But you know God has convicted you, has spoken to you about that. Or after the, t- today's service, you heard the voice of God. Instead of taking a step, you wait next Friday. Tonight, you should have taken the step. Oh, right after the service. Second service has finished. You haven't taken a step. Ah. Evening has come. You haven't taken a step. Monday has come. Tuesday night, now you are considering, oh, I haven't done it, I have to do it. That's delayed obedience. Abraham rose up early. Your obedience must be live. As it's happening, as you are hearing, you are doing. That's faith. When we talk, we call Abraham the father of faith, it's because he obeyed God when he heard it. In fact, the Bible says that by faith, Abraham, when he was asked to move from his father's house, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 8, when he was asked to move, he went. He went, when he was by faith, when Abraham was called to go out, of, of, uh, go out into a place which he should after receive for inheritance, obeyed. That's obedience there. Obeyed. And he went out. He, he didn't wait for details. They said move. He started going. Uh, uh, what's the address? Just go. I need that. Go. Some of us will never move until God gives you the address. <laughs> you want Satnav. But your, oh, oh, watch this, your obedience will be live transmission, live direction. When there's traffic anywhere, see, you are operating the old obedience. So if your Sadna is not, uh, doesn't have direct GP code, there's major heavy traffic, but you don't know. Because that's the way the tra- that old Sadna, you, you stay in the traffic for hours whilst your contemporaries have used a different route. Because it was live. The, the Sadna said, take right, you're still going forward because you know this is the old one I know. This morning asked actually when we were coming the sudden enough took us through a route and I was telling Pastor, oh, I thought we were going through Pastor who said maybe I'm sure there's heavy traffic somewhere there or road, roadblock. So just, you, call, you can't see the roadblock. You can't see that. You're the one you want to marry. You can't see the roadblock. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you want to relocate. You can't see the roadblock. So you have to, we have to learn how to bend our ears to hear from God. And as soon as we hear, promptly obey. Promptly obey. Live obedience. Live obedience. Real-time obedience. I'm talking about now obedience. The Bible said, now, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Now, faith is not later faith. It's not previously faith. Now, faith is, not was. Faith is. Someone say faith is. Faith is. Say faith is. Faith is. Now, faith is the substance of things. So, faith is now. Faith is now. Instantly. Immediately. So, when God speaks, it is always important we take the step in line with what God has said. In um, John chapter 2, verse 5, when they were run out of wine... Jesus told them, whatever he tells you, just do it. Just do it. If that is from God, what's your problem? Just do it. Just do it. That's obedience. So, see, you are doing things because it's commanded. That's faith. That's faith. Faith is not wishful, wishful thinking. I'm hoping that maybe one day I'll get a big job. Those things are not fatal, please. It's wishes. They are wishes. Many, many believers are filled with wishes. And then they look for pastors they can pay to pray their wishes into realities. <laughs> it's a cheap way of living. Faith is the quality way of living. Where you are doing things based on your resolute understanding and conviction in what you know God is saying and you trust God enough. And you obey when God's. That's faith. So I submit to you, if you are not walking in obedience, you are not walking by faith. Before you shout, I walk by obedience, show us, or I walk by faith, show us where you are obeying God. 
Most of us, as I said the other time, we only want to obey things we want. So, God, I, God, I felt God is telling me um, I should um, um, I should marry her. Uh, that's easier. I should, you know, when you like somebody, you hear a lot of good things. <laughs> Even in your sleeps. <laughs> you hear a lot of good I hear God is telling me. But you are not hearing the one. God is telling me I should let him go. I should let her go. Even though there's nobody in the horizon, I can hear. I can hear. I know. And anytime you go into a time of prayer and relationship with, an active relationship with God, you know that his voice doesn't change. He keeps telling you the same thing. Let, let Ishmael go. Let Ishmael go. Let, see, but we don't want that sacrifice. So we have to find a way and heap on to ourselves other voices that will seem to endorse what we actually want in our hearts. God is leading me to... Most, most people who say God is telling me to uh, leave church and not, most of them are dread. Most, most of it is not God. Most of it is just personal preferences. But in order to keep opposition at bay, so God has told me. I mean, when God, even an archbishop cannot tell you, because God is bigger than Archbishop. <laughs> Don't be deceived by people who keep saying, God has told me, God has told me. All right, so, I, I, oh, oh, wow, that's two, eh? Life of obedience, all right. Number three is, what is faith? Faith is daring the impossible. Dare! Sitting in one place, comfortably, waiting for everything to change, and you say, I'm a man of faith. No, you're a man of fear. <laughs> that, Peter said, if it is you, bid me to come. Yeah, that's faith I'm talking about. That's faith. Peter said, if it is you, Matthew chapter 14, verse 28. Peter said, Lord, if it is you, bid me, bid me, bid me come unto thee. I like that bit. On the water. Ah, this is it. Peter, I just would say, Peter, did you just say that? So that you, uh, you ask them, what is it? You said he should tell you to come on the water. Say, yeah. But if it's him, what's wrong? If it's him, then what's wrong? And then he got, he got it. Peter, Jesus said, come. Wow. Then he stepped out. Started walking on the water. A human being walking on water. Wow. How can you explain that with science? Some of us, we are just so scientific. <laughs> He lived by science. <laughs> my doctor said, 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 the statistics are saying, keep living like that. You will get the results others are getting. But if you want to get the results of God, you better walk by faith. So, Jesus said, come. And for the first time, he started walking on the water. He started walking on the water. But he took his eyes off the word of God, looked at the storms, then he began to sink. And I said, Jesus, Save me. He just said, why did you doubt? Oh, ye of little, little one, faith. So he, had, he started by faith. But as I taught you on Friday, his faith began to wane. So it, what was faith? Faith is that de, de, to dare the impossible. Dare the impossible. Dare it. Some of us are too timid. Believe God. Oh, you walk in. David ran towards Goliath and said, bring me this guy. He ran. He was in a hurry to take this thing down. And he said that God will take you. He told him God, God will kill you. And then he was running towards him. He was, Goliath said, you, hey, think I'm a dog? And you're coming to me with sling. I'm a dog? He said, I come to you in the name of the God of Israel, whose armies you have defiled in, in 1 Samuel chapter 16 or 17. And he ran towards him. And he took the sling, he ran towards, he ran towards the challenge. He went to the, to the eye of the storm. Why? In the name of the Lord. In the name of the Lord. Faith is daring the impossible. Everybody say it cannot be done. Dare it. Dare it as long as you have a word from God. As long as it's based on God's word. Dare it. Hallelujah. I see you having strange testimonies. Amen. It's about Jesus said, if I give this, by the time of, by the time the son of man, shall he find faith on the earth? Many people are 
faithless. Faithless, but very, very active religiously. Faithless, but the just shall live by faith. Religion operates by a set of laws. Faith operates by focusing on God. So, number three is daring the um, impossible. Abraham, in Romans chapter 4, verse 18, the Bible says that he hoped against hope. Ah! Abraham against hope believed in hope. I mean, that is daring the impossible. How dare you believe that you be, you are an old man like this. You are an old man. Your body is dead. Your wife's body, the womb is dead. And you believe to be father of men. I mean, how can you? That, that's preposterous. Well, you might call it ridiculous. It takes the ridiculous to get the miraculous. So he, 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 the Bible says that he believed against hope. He believed in hope. Against, contrary to what normally everybody will, uh, uh, or science will say. What everybody will say. What common sense will say. If you live your life by common sense, you get common results. Faith. The life of faith. Living the life of faith. I see you doing well in the life of faith. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. All right. Number four is keep your eyes on God's promise. So what is faith? Faith is keeping your eyes on God's promise. Just keep your eye. That's why Peter started sinking. Because Jesus said, come. And then he kept his eye on it. But when he took off the eyes, he started. He looked at the storms instead of the word. See, now, how can you see the word? See, that's, that's where the problem is. We walk by faith, not by sight. Second Corinthians chapter 7, verse 5. We walk by faith, not by sight. That means that not by what physically you can see. He chose to let what he was seeing physically dictate how he was behaving. Even though, watch this. Even though he had received a word from God, he had received a word from God, but he still chose to move or live or behave based on just natural circumstances, which was contrary to God's word. That's why I started thinking. So faith is keeping your eye on God's word. You don't change. Things can look negative, but you know the word is true. And you keep your focus on the word. What the word. After, listen, after all is said and done, after all the discussions, this is difficult, this cannot be, after everything, you submit out, say, well, it's really so. That's this, what we see. But God is faithful. And I believe. End the thing. Seal it with God's word. Yeah. With what you believe in God's word. The doctors have said A, B, C, C, C. But God is faithful. And don't just say it. Believe it in your heart. Believe it in your heart. So you keep your eye on the word of God. Come high, come rain, come shine. You keep your eyes on the word of God. Keep your focus on the word of God. Bible says that Sarah, Sarah, um, by faith, Sarah herself conceived when she was past age, Hebrews 11, 11, for she judged, oh, all right, the promise there, you see, kept, kept an, her, her eye on God's promise, but God promised that you shall have a, a child. So she judged God faithful. She judged God faithful. So in spite of all that is happening, she knew God's word is true. That, that, that's, that's what it means to so keep your eye on the promise of God. The Bible said that she, because she judged him faithful who had promise. God's word is full of promises. God's word. How many of you have been disappointed by someone's promise? Someone who promised you didn't fail, you didn't fulfill. Yeah. Oh, some of you haven't. You have to show us how you did it. <laughs> Especially builders, they can really let you down. <laughs> yeah. Or when you are a girl and boys, you know, men then sometimes they can keep their weight. Sometimes, so not all the time. So, but boys, boys can't keep their promises to a girl. Are the young ladies listening to me? Before you say they are trash, they, that's their nature. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. That's their nature. They were moved by something they didn't understand to tell you what they thought they meant. But later they realized that actually they didn't know what they were talking about. And then they tell you the problem is not you. It's me. It's me. 
But God is faithful. Bible says that faithful is he who has promised. When God promises you, he won't let you down. He won't let you down. So when everything turns against you, just make sure one thing you shouldn't lose. Don't lose your focus on the promise of God. That's faith. Faith is keeping your, your, your focus, your eyes on the promise of God. I see someone keeping your eye on the promise of God. Men can't help you. You know, sometimes we have to be smart enough to know when it gets to a place, you can tell that this one has gone past the help of man. But I have chosen that I will wait for that time. I will wait for it to go past. I've just locked myself in the position. Whether men can help me or they can't help me, it's just, it's just God. I, I depend on God. I, I rest. I, I, conf, I, rest I, I, I put my confidence in God. I put rest, I'm restfully confident in God. But it gets to a time where maybe you have still not realized. It's just like you are, you are traveling in a direction. And then suddenly you realize no car is coming from that direction. The road is very, but not the, when you go to neighborhoods you are not familiar with. Yeah. You are driving, driving, then you realize all the cars that are packed, they are facing this way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is, am I on one way or something? <laughs> So you don't look for your destination. You just have to look and make sure you're on the, the right, right way. So it gets to a time you have to be quick enough to start assessing what is important and fixing your eye on the important thing than what you are looking for. Because sometimes you may get what you are looking for at the expense of your future, at the expense of your peace, at the expense of your, of your te- real testimony. But that will not be your portion. Amen. So faith is keeping your eyes on God's promises. Abraham did not stagger. I like that text. Let me just throw that in a bit. The Bible says that he staggered not at the promise of God. And that translation said he, waved, he did not waver. He did not waver. He was, he was not to and fro. Uh, today, uh, okay, maybe it's well. Okay, it's good. Uh, uh, I'm not sure. I don't know. How, how are you doing? Uh, I don't know. We are hungry. Uh, I don't understand people who say we are hanging in there. <laughs> no, 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 no. Okay, if you don't have faith, that's different. But a man of faith, a woman of faith, never be caught saying things like that. How is that? We are hanging in there. So, so. <laughs> que sera, sera. The devil is a liar. <laughs> All right, number, number five. Live in, reality, in the reality of what is not yet seen. This is very important. Live in the reality of what is not yet seen. A typical example, let's say um, we are, my wife and I, let's say we are believing God for a child. We don't talk like we will never have a child. No. We start, be, be, once we know God has given us a word, we start actually, start trying to check where they sell children's clothes. We have, to, we, we have to live like the thing is coming. We live in the reality of Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's a substance. It's not like it's not there. It's here. Let, oh, get what? Faith is not there. Faith is here. Faith is, is the substance of things hoped for. And it, it, it drops a bigger, a stronger one. The evidence of things that have not been seen. Why are you waiting to see it? Before you get confident. You are confident in what hasn't been seen. And people who are faithless don't get you. But you are not living to impress them. When the results come, they will say, ah, ah, so that's what you meant. Yes. So you have to, but it says that it's the evidence of things not seen. Not yet seen. It hasn't been manifested yet. You are talking about what? That's why Abraham had to believe God. Uh, uh, Hebrew, uh, Romans chapter 8 verse 17. Sorry, 4 verse 17. said, before even God, whom he believed, who gives life to the dead and calls things which be not as though they were. Okay? So that is faith. The things physically, you haven't experienced them. Realistically, you haven't seen them. But you are living in a certain reality. Ah, that's one. You live in a reality that hasn't done on others. You live in a reality. You live in a reality of good health. 
Sometimes yeah, the, the pain, sometimes you're, you've taken the paracetamol and the pain, and, but you still live in the reality of you can't be hospitalized. Man, you live in the reality of this thing is just came in to go. I didn't invite it. It came, so it will go. You live in a certain reality. Live in the reality of what hasn't yet been seen. That's faith. That's faith. That's faith. Based on God's word. That's faith. Did God say it? Live in the reality of it. So when people are saying, it's not working, it's not working, you are wondering, well, even though it hasn't seen, you know it's working. But what's the evidence? Oh, no, I have the evidence is my faith. It's not, yeah, that's the evidence. And then later on, it will show up. I see somebody growing in faith. Amen. We walk by faith and not by sight. Number six, what is faith? Oh, I like faith. Are you of victory? Ah, so faith is the actual victory. The victory that, no, not the victory after overcoming, no. it's the victory that overcomes. You have, a, you are holding victory to overcome. So when you have victory, you don't talk defeat. How can you talk defeat when you have? So you can't say you have faith. When, when you open your mouth, it's defeat, 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 defeat. You don't have faith. Because faith is the, it's not a risk. Don't mind those who tell you faith is a risk. Faith is the victory. It's not a risk. It's the victory that overcomes the world. So faith is that taking the shield of faith by which you can be able to quench all the fiery darts of the enemy. And then finally, finally, faith. What is faith? Faith is trusting God to the end. It's not like after some time you stop trusting him. I trusted him yesterday. I trusted him last week. I trusted him last month. I trusted him last year. I trusted him last 10 years. I trusted him last 20 years, and I haven't changed my mind. I'm still trusting him to the end. Bible talks in Hebrews chapter 11 that all these died in faith, having not obtained the promise. That's faith. They haven't actually even seen what they believed God for, but they were still, they knew they had it. Hebrews eleven thirteen. All these died in faith, having not received the promises. They still died in faith. So faith is trusting God to the end. Job said, even though he slays me, Job chapter 13, verse 15, even though he slays me, yet I will trust him. So it's not based on conditions. My trusting God is not conditional. The only condition for my trusting God is his word. If it's his word, then that's it. If it's not his word, then I can't trust him for that. Don't trust God for anything his word hasn't endorsed. The psalmist said, whenever I'm afraid, I'll trust in you. Psalm 56, verse 3. Whenever I'm afraid. Trust in God. You can never trust God and be put to shame. He's a buckler to all those who trust him. So what does it mean to walk in faith? Walk by faith. It means that you are walking in obedience. It means that you are walking, keeping your eyes on the word of God. It means that you are walking in life obedience. You are rest, uh, walking, being uh, confidently restful in God. And it means that you are daring the impossible. It means that you are keeping your eyes on, on the promises of God. It means that you are, you are living and acting in the reality of things that haven't yet seen. Because faith is an action. It means that you, you, are, you have the victory and you are talking the victory. And it means that you are trusting in God. I see someone growing in faith. In Jesus' name, amen. Did you receive something? Thank you for listening to this message by David Entry. When God speaks, works show. And the works will surely show in your life. To hear more from David Entry, follow him on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, and subscribe to Caris Church on YouTube. Don't forget to share and subscribe to our podcast so you're always up to date. Be blessed.